so topic is your gene expression the differential gene expression the mechanism of cell differentiation well uh, each somatic cell nucleus has the same chromosome and therefore the same set of genes as all other somatic cell nucleus the fundamental concept known as your genomic equivalence presented a significant conceptual dilemma so things that simple each and every single cell has the same genome and uh, though they contain the same um, same genome but still they differentiated into different variation and various kind of cells with different functional activity so how does it i mean how did do they they do that i mean how does it possible i mean so it's based on their differential expression the differential genomic expression so before going to this topic dif let me define this differential gene expression uh, while well, the differential gene expression is the process it is the process by which the cell become different the cell become different from one another and uh, best of one and that cell who is differentiated from one another is based on uh, the unique combination the unique combination of different genes of the genome that is expressed in the particular time interval during that uh, time the, and the amount of concentration they are produced so all these things together which regulate and leads to a different kind of cell type of pro uh, cell type production so the differential gene expression is the process by which the cells become differentiated from one another based upon the unique combination of genes that are active or expressed uh, there are three postulates on differential gene expression one is every somatic cell nucleus of an organism contain the complete genomes established in the fertilized egg that means when a egg is fertilized it possess the uh, pair of haploid or i mean pair of haploid chromosome i mean chromosome sorry so those two haploid set of chromosome, uh, chromosome combined to form a complete diploid cell that is what we call zygote and the zygote containing the genome is i mean the zygote contain the same amount of genomic information as power in every single differentiated cells and that's the uniqueness that every somatic cell nucleus of an organism contain the complete genome established in the fertilized egg to better understand this thing in molecular term the dna of all the differentiated cells that means from the day the zygote form and till the day where whole or organism is formed with individual trillions of cells and each of them cell possess that same amount of genome that found in that zygotic stage that's why all the dna of a differentiated cell are identical the second one is the unused gene in differentiated cells neither destroyed nor mutated they are retained the potential for being expressed the unused gene the gene which remains silent the gene which don't need to be expressed in that particular cell type then it may remain silent but it doesn't means that they are mutated or destroyed rather they still have the capability to be expressed and this could be possible with a suitable transcription factor some gradient of some protein etc so in small and the third one is your only a small percentage of genome is expressed in each cell and a portion of the RNA synthesized in each cell is specific for the cell type that means from this whole set of genomes only very small first fraction of this genome is really get expressed in particular differentiated cell types and that to be even very differentiated with time the expression is also different for example in early stage the embryonic stage in during the birth during the post embryonic stage so different stage of lifetime the, s the different cells have the different genomic expression is very in the amount of expression is very the, the type of expression etc so gene expression can be regulated at the four level such as your uh, different cell type synthesize different cell of protein the first one is your at the level of transcription where the genome get transcribed to RNA what we call the nuclear RNA that nuclear RNA possess the 
exonic sequence and the intronic sequence exonic sequence which could be taken or which could not be taken uh, in sense that uh, I will talk about this in coming pages so this and second thing is your selective nuclear RNA processing that means <coughs> this nuclear RNA is to be processed to become functional messenger RNA and then it has to be exported by this RAS GTP mechanism I mean this uh, uh, RAS GTP mechanism by the exporting of this nucleus protein etc so this selection of those mRNA which are produced functional mRNA then which one or which among them should be actually exported to the cytoplasm to become functionally translated that's the second point the third one is your translation that means the functional mRNA which is now selected to be transported to the cytoplasm there also the selection that which one is under should be undergoes translation and uh, after that the fourth one is your uh, differential protein modification regulators that means the protein which are also formed is not yet uh, functional there it has also be to be selected uh, for uh, different like your for example uh, it has some terminal sequence signal sequence so that that need to be cleared to become functional then there is some uh, uh, by means of using some heat protein there's some need to changes changes in its conformation so that uh, it could function better or it can it can be becomes functional so that's the thing so now development of uh, nothing okay so here is the, the quick prime uh, primer of central, central it's, oh, it's a central dogma that nothing is important the air process on as you know okay so here is the four level i'm talking about do you want to or not that what i want to tell you forget about this the nucleus here your nucleus has the all genome set in every single cell of the differentiated cells i mean so here's the dna uh, which gives rise to the nuclear rna so among this whole bunch of chromosome i mean this dna genome sequence all this very small portion is selected that has transcribed to be a uh, give a nuclear rna which is then undergoes some splicing mechanism to give rise to 5 dex uh, to guanine and the 3 dex polyethyl and this uh, selects, uh, selection of uh, and also by a spicism the exonic sequence are being selected and then the further is moved to get translated and it gives the amino acid sequences change and then the protein need to be modified and then to get a carrier its function as a functional protein so, okay so that's the thing now the evidence for the genomic equivalence well the genomic equivalence means that every single differential cell possess that equal amount of genome that can be proved and this experiment is done wonderfully by uh, your there are some uh, experiments to also shows the mm, uh, genome equivalence like your polyethylene chromosome this found in larva stage of drosophila saliva uh, cells saliva cells and some or skip gene which is showing the same type of protein being, uh, being expressed in different region that means all the genes are identical having the same genomic sequences that can be proved also by this experiment but the most wonderful experiment is done by this person Ian Wilmot and his colleague who used uh, who use uh, a cloning technique what we call dolly now being usually a bag and now being and not mostly used in scientific approach scientific research purpose now and one thing is that he used about 433 oocyte and only one of them survived and that's a dolly so you can imagine that how critical critically he managed all those things and lot and and this become successfully done this experiment to prove that genomic equivalence so here is the experiment i'm going to show you uh, here you can see that this, this is the, on the left on the very left side is the scottish black face strand that is the oocyte donor whereas you, your extreme right side you can see the nuclear donor is the fin dorsal that means the nucleus is being donated by the other cell 
of that fin dorset and uh, it's being transplanted on a uh, egg nucleus but the thing that you have to remember here is that uh, the meiotic spindle uh, the region where the chromosome is lied in this uh, egg, uh, inuted egg and the egg it must be in the uh, stage of your what you call metaphysic stage of secondary meiosis and does uh, and your other cell cell must be in the G1 cell stage and that is being halted is I mean the cell cycle being halted at G1 stage of this nuclear donor then this cell is being fused with the pulse electric field I mean electric current and then it undergoes the seven days of in uh, in vitro culture to give a blastocyte then it get inserted inside our surrogate mother that is your Scottish block face and then it gives right to a d uh, nested gift to a, a lab which is the, having a nuclear identical I mean who is uh, have a genetical identical of his genome to that of your nuclear donor so this is how he proved that the cloning technique and as well as similarly the genomic equivalence that every single cell possessed is all the same um, possess that complete set of genome and which can be need some appropriate factors which can leads it to be a completely fully formed organism for the experiment man and one more thing in this extreme left is the dolly which also gives rise to a baby that means it's completely fertile that's a wonderful creation of experiment man i think so okay now the modulating the access to gene so chromatin so what is that chromatin uh, you can see here eukaryotic genes are connect are contained within a complex of DNA and protein what we call chromatin that means the protein component constitute about half of the way the chromatin is composed of largely histones so forget about all these things come to the nucleosome the nucleosome is your basic unit of chromatin and the nucleosome is nothing <coughs> it possesses a polynucleotide chain that is a DNA deoxyribonucleic acid chain which is coir two times on histone octa octamer and histo histone octamer is a complex of protein uh, which is made up of a poor homopolymer protein that means S2A, S2B, S3 and S3 and H4 these are the four uh, copy I mean four number of type of protein in diploid number are being coiled by this nuclear chain to form the nucleosome and this elongated structure is called chromatin so you better understand I think and one more thing is there are the heterochromatin euchromatin you know as well I will come to this very soon but let me first show you this structure okay so here you go so this is a new DNA I'm talking about the DNA the polynucleotide chain two times coiled around the histone octamer this is the histone octamer structure S2A, S2B, S3, S4 and the other tail of histone with some lysine arginine like basic amino acid structure so that it can be controlled this acetylation and methylation to free this coil DNA around it which could be transcribed and that's the region so this is your histone surrounding with your chain and if you see this is the chromatin so the functional unit of chromatin is your nucleosome because this chromonucleosome which are held very tightly closely packed with that H1 linker DNA, H1 linker protein which binds about 60 to 80 base pair of the DNA to combine all these nucleosomes to form the chromatin structure uh, that's the thing now come to the important part this is your methylation and your acetylation so this is the very important thing because uh, let me show you why uh, <coughs> so this video is getting longer i'll take this in next thank you